Welcome back everyone, my name is Joel Feld and today the topic is all about photo editing within Apple Photos on Big Sur. Let's rock and roll. For what it's worth, Apple Photos is actually really good in my opinion. That comes straight on the Mac. There's lots of basic editing, a lot of different tools, and there's a lot to it. And when it comes down to editing, in my opinion, it's really all subjective because the way I edit photos, some people may like, some people may not like. The way you edit photos, same kind of thing. So really, take it for what it's worth. It's more about learning the tools that are at your fingertips and what they do to manipulate the photos that you've taken to create your own style, your own feel for the way that you edit your photography. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm gonna go ahead and open up photos here. Now, if this is your first time in photos or first time editing photos or first time organizing, I'll kind of go through some of the, the layout and the interface to guide you to where these tools live. But I have a whole nother video dedicated to the interface and where things are organized, how to organize all of that. So first I'm going to select a picture. And if I double click on that, it's gonna open up that photograph for me. And in the top right hand side, I have a handful of buttons. Starting from the far right, we have our edit. And then next to that, we have an auto enhance, we have a rotate, we have our favorites, we have a share button and an info button. The far three ones give you options to edit your photograph. So starting with the middle rotate, it's as simple as clicking that and you're rotating 90 degrees. Now what's cool is if you hold down option on the keyboard, it'll actually reverse that arrow. So now I'm rotating the other direction. The next option to the right of that is auto enhance. It's doing what the computer thinks is best for that photograph. Is it always good? Nope, not at all. So try it if you like it, keep it. If not, that's okay too. So if I click on auto enhance, it's gonna go through and decide what it thinks is best. It'll take a second here, and then it's going to apply those settings. There we go. So that auto enhance worked, and actually one key feature that I saw that it actually did work on was take the red eye out of the eyes of, of Bennett there. So what I can do is actually just click back on enhance, and that's gonna reverse that process. So that's the before, and I can click back on it again and see those changes. Sometimes it's very, very minimal. There's not a lot of changes to the auto enhance. I'm gonna actually go ahead now and click edit in the top right because every time you do the auto enhance, you can actually see all of the different sliders and all of the changes that were made based off of the computer's decision. And if I uncheck the auto enhance, notice all of these different sliders go back to the starting point for zero for everything. Now, when we click this edit, this is where it brings up the majority of our editing tools. And we're gonna start across the top center. So we have our adjust, we have filters, and we have our crop. Now I'm gonna click done here and I'm gonna go to a different photograph because I wanna kinda edit these in the fashion of the, uh, the tools that we're looking at. So I'm gonna start with crop here. I'm gonna go into this photo here and say, I want to crop this picture because maybe notice at the top left here and the top right, I have actually some of the little lights that maybe I don't want in that photograph. So if I click on edit, I can go to crop in the top center and this is where I have a couple different tools of how I want to crop this image. So on every corner, I can actually click and hold and drag the cursor around and I'm making whatever the crop I want to be, meaning I'm taking away part of the picture. So if I go ahead and let go right now, it's gonna take that whole top portion and crop it out of the, the, the picture completely. Now, the thing with cropping is you wanna be very careful because if I am just dragging this and I, I crop it in really tight like this around the subject, it's making a very tall, narrow photograph. Now, depending on what you're doing with this picture, whether you're gonna print it, whether it's going on the web, whether you wanna text this to someone, you wanna always make sure that you're cropping in an aspect ratio based off of what you wanna do with it. For example, if I were to print this picture as a five by seven image, chances are it's gonna look completely terrible. Something is gonna get chopped off because notice on the right here, I have the free form selected as the cropping aspect ratio. So whenever you're cropping, make sure that you're going to the aspect ratio so it's always gonna be proportionate for your uh, photograph. So notice when I go back to five by seven, it's actually making it more square and I can come back 
and now I can do a nice crop like this. Also under the aspect ratio, I can make it a horizontal or landscape. And again, I can crop it and move the subject around just by clicking and holding in the center, I can drag it. And again, I can always drag from the corners as well. Now I'm gonna go back to vertical here. I'm gonna bring it back down. Right above the aspect ratio, I have a flip option. So if I flip, it's just gonna reverse that photograph. And again, side tip, hold down option on the keyboard and it's going to flip it the other way, which is kind of nice. So if I want her to be upside down, she's upside down and vice versa. So hold down option for that. The next thing is you have control not only for rotating in, in specific 90 degree increments, but you have this little slider here on the side that give you very subtle degree uh, adjustments for your rotation of your photograph. So let's just say that I'm gonna keep this. I want her full hand in there. There we go. So we're just gonna crop her like that. And let me go to another picture here. All right, we'll pull up this photograph here of this long narrow bridge. And this is where you can make kind of that, that subtle adjustment for the cropping. I wanna make sure that the horizon is completely straight. So this allows me to fine tune and I have this nice grid on the picture so I can actually see and fine tune that adjustment. Or if I wanna make it completely kind of diagonal and go a little bit uh, creative with my style, I can move it like that and, and reposition it. So it's, I got those leading lines directly down the center and it's kind of off center or tilted I should say. And we're going from there. So that is your cropping tool. You can have fine tuned adjustments, you can change the aspect ratio based off of what you're doing with that picture, and then you can flip and flop and uh, rotate that photo all you want. All right, once you're done, you can go ahead and click done there, and then we're back to square one with a red eye. So I'm gonna pull up this picture and notice I have red eye on a handful of these, uh, on the eyes in this picture. So I'm gonna go to edit, and if I scroll down, through this about halfway down I have red eye and with all of these controls usually there's a little auto button which will automatically detect the face or detect the the photo itself and do its best judgment for that edit or I can always do it manually so if I click on auto here it's gonna automatically go and find all of the faces with the eyeballs and get rid of that red eye now notice one of them didn't really work too well so I can always go back manually and change that so here, uh, next to the auto button, I have an undo or a reset for this adjustment. I'm gonna reset this and go back to square one. And I'm gonna grab the little brush icon here. And this allows me to go over each eye. Now I don't need the brush that large, so I can bring it down a little bit. But essentially, it's just wanting me to go on each picture. I should say each eyeball and, and get rid of each red eye. So I can click on them individually, and just like that, the red eye is gone. And I can zoom back out, and all is well. Also, next to every adjustment, there's a little blue circle on the far right. And this just allows you to toggle on and toggle off that particular edit or adjustment. So if I click this to turn it off, notice the red eye comes back. Click it again, the red eye is gone. So that is the red eye adjustment. Now, in this adjustments tab, we have lots and lots of different adjustments. We have our light adjustments, our color adjustments, black and white, retouch, red eye, white balance, curves, levels, all sorts of different options here. So at any given time, if you ever are curious about what these adjustments do, or you need a little refresher of what does the curves mean, you can always go up to the help menu, go under photos help, and I'm just gonna type in curves, for example. And it will bring up this nice user guide that gives a brief explanation about adjusting curves inside of photos. And it will actually give you nice visuals. It'll give you what the adjustment actually does. So take a look at this and don't be afraid to use it and don't forget to use it because often I will go back and reference it also just in case I, I forgot something. The next picture I wanna look at is kids here. They're actually at the park. This is a nice summer day. 
let's go to edit in the top right because the next thing that we're gonna look at in the top center is the filters. And when I go to filters, I have a list of filters on the top right that allow me to, you know, it's your Instagram filters. It's just your slap over the top of the picture to create some kind of stylistic effect. And one of the new features uh, that they enhanced in filters with Big Sur or photos in Big Sur is the ability to change the, the slider, the increments, the filter itself. So instead of just being on and off, you can now change the level of intensity for each of your filters. So as I click through these, I can drag it and go over. And I actually kind of like this uh, warm. It kind of gives it this nostalgic, uh, rustic feel. Now, one thing that's really cool is whenever you're editing photos and you want to see kind of the before and after, there's a couple different ways to do that. In the top left side of photos, there's an actual button that if you click and hold on it, it's going to show you the before photo. And when you release, it's going to show you the after photo showing all of your adjustments. You can also do the same thing by pressing M on the keyboard. So if I press M on the keyboard, it's going to show me the master image, the original, or if I let go of M on the keyboard, I'm now back to the edited version. And keep in mind, this is all digital editing. It's all non-destructive, meaning that I can make a thousand changes to any of these pictures and I can always revert it back to the original in the top left and I can always start from square one. So just know that it's okay to experiment, you know, get your own style, play, see what things do, drag sliders all the way to the left, all the way to the right and see what happens. That's okay. You don't have to worry about messing up a photograph and losing it. Uh, it's all non-destructive. So play, you gotta play. So that is filters. I actually kind of like this uh, a little bit. And again, with filters, then the next thing that we could do is go to the adjustment tab. And this is really where you have the most control out of all of your photographs and the editing based off of the, the exposure, the lights, the contrast, the, the sharpness, the dark shadows, all of the different elements for your photograph. You have all of these different sliders and tweaks that you can do. So if I wanted to come and further edit this picture with that uh, filter applied, I could come in and boost up the vibrancy, which is also a new slider they added in photos within Big Sur. So I could bump that up a little bit, maybe bump up the brilliance, uh, bring down the shadows a little bit so they're more like a little silhouette in the background. And now I have this nice vibrant blue and I could go down to, let's say, selective color and select the green and bring up the green so it's a little bit more saturated, a little bit more green and brighten it up a little bit. So just a few little treat tweaks there. If I press M on the keyboard, that's the before, let go, that's the after. So again, it's all based off of what you think is right, what you feel is right. If you don't like the edit, that's totally cool. Uh, some people will and some people won't. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch done there and double click and go back to the other photographs. Now the next thing that I want to do is kind of go through all of the different adjustments that are available to us. So let's go ahead and start with the light adjustments. And let's go to ah this picture on the Mediterranean beach because it was so beautiful. So we're going to go to edit here and we're going to go and start with the light adjustments. Now we have various different sliders and adjustments here. The light is composed of the brilliance, exposure, highlights, all of these different choices. But at the top, there's also an overall light slider. I can actually drag and drag it to the left and I can drag it all the way to the right. And it's kind of making changes based off of what the computer thinks is best for this photograph. So if I drag it all the way to the left, it wants to adjust the brilliance and the exposure and the highlights in various ways based off of what the computer thinks is best. So sometimes it looks really good, sometimes it doesn't. It's all up to you. But as we go through here, you can always you know, do a little bit of both. Maybe I wanna bring, uh, because it's too bright, and I want some of that blue sky to come out, I'm gonna drag the whole slider itself down and then I can individually tweak some of the highlights or some of the shadows or the brightness and really just kind of play around with it till I get a nice feel for what I'm looking for. So all of these here, I can bring up the black point a little bit, bring it down. And again, what looks good to me may not look good to you and that's, that's cool too. 
So overall, I'm going to bring the exposure up, make it a little bit brighter. And now if I press M on the keyboard, that's the before, that's the after. So it might be a little bit too saturated. So again, play around with, with the different sliders and the adjustments. And you don't have to stop here. I can go to light, I can open up the color one, and maybe I want to drag the cast to the left, see what that does. It kind of gives it a more uh, blue, greenish tint to it. Drag it all the way to the right. It's going to give it more of a, almost a, a yellowish, orangish feel to it. So you kind of get the idea. Your adjustments and sliders allow you to manipulate certain aspects of the photograph. Now here's a side tip too. What's really cool is if you hold down option, again, hold down option, hold down option on the keyboard, notice what happened to all of these different sliders. If I let go and then press it again, they actually increase. So when you're dealing with these sliders, you only have increments of let's say five. But when you hold down option on the keyboard, now you'll have increments up to 10. So you're, you have the ability to go above and beyond what it actually has here. So as an example, if I take saturation, I can only go up to one here fully. But if I hold down option on the keyboard, I can now go past one all the way to number two. So I can increase it even more. That looks absolutely terrible. So I wanna undo that or get rid of that adjustment altogether. So that's where I go to this little arrow and completely get rid of that. So let's pull up a different photograph here. If we go back into this picture here, this uh, again was on the Mediterranean beach. And this is where it's really a, a dark picture. I can brighten it up and you know, kind of bring the shadows up a little bit kind of so we see more of that photograph, that guy on the beach, bring the highlights down, maybe too much with the shadows, boost the vibrance a little bit, maybe we'll play with the, uh, the white balance to make the temperature a little bit more warm so it's more like on a day beach, and uh, sharpen it slightly, play a little bit with um, definition, so again, it's really all based off of what you think looks good. If I press M on the keyboard, that's the before. Let go, that's the after. So there's really, really no right or wrong way. It's, it's do what you like and what appeals to you. And, and that's what you can do. So that's a little bit more of adjusting using the light choices. Let's go ahead and uh, so we looked at the light options. Let's look at the color. So let's pull up a different photograph here. Maybe we'll bring up this nice, this nice scenic uh, hike. We were with the kids in, I forget what state park, someplace in Minnesota. And there's just two rivers kind of join at the bridge and it's just absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna go edit here and I'm gonna play around with the color sliders. And again, I can drag the whole color slider, notice if I go all the way to the left, it's actually taking color out of that. So I'm desaturating, re meaning I'm removing all color associated with it. If I drag it to the right, I'm pretty much boosting up all of the, all of the colors. So it increases the saturation, the vibrance, all of that. And again, this is just dealing with color. I can then further that edit and go with the shadows or the highlights. Um, all of that. So I can really go through and just kind of tweak these settings based off of how I like it. I can go down and add a little bit of definition to the photograph, which will kind of, it's kind of like sharpen, but deals with the contrast. And then I can sharpen this up a little bit and then maybe add a little bit of vignettes on the edge to kind of pull that focus in. And so now if I press M on the keyboard, that's the before, let go, that's the after. So very subtle tweaks. Everything is just a little bit more, colors pop a little bit more. It's a little bit more vibrant. It's a little bit more appealing, some might say, and some might not say, and that's cool too. So that's some of the color options and the light. Again, just play. All you gotta do is play. The next option we have is black and white. Same kind of thing. So let's pull up, uh, this was a skate park down uh, California. We were, uh, I forget what skate park, we were in Santa Monica or, um, I don't know where we were. Daniel, where were we? Uh, we were in Venice. Venice Beach, yes, Venice Beach, that's where we were. So I really like this image, it was really cool. And let's go ahead and turn it black and white because 
Why not? So if we go back and slide down to our black and white, I could click on auto, see what it looks like, see what the computer wants to decide, or I can reset this and I can slowly drag the overall black and white slider and I can have the ability to increase the intensity, the neutrals, and just really kind of play around with it. The thing is, you know, all of these photographs that you're working with, depending on what camera took it, if you're shooting in raw, if you shoot it indoors, outdoors, just because you apply one setting for one photo doesn't mean it's going to apply it to another photograph. So as I go through here, maybe I'll bring up the intensity a little bit. Uh, we'll add a little bit of, uh, I don't like the grain. Not a huge fan of grain for whatever reason, but let's bring up the tone that kind of gets those white clouds there. Now, just because it's black and white, I can still use some of the other adjustments. I'm gonna go back up to my light options and I'm gonna bring the shadows up that way it kind of makes the ground a little bit brighter. We can increase the brightness a little bit. I'll bring down the highlights. And again, I'll maybe sharpen it slightly, do some definition, and uh, just really kind of play around with it and see what it looks like. Every slider is gonna produce different results and different a different feel with every single picture. Now the cool thing is, let's say that you spend a lot of time editing one picture and you do have a similar photograph that maybe you both, maybe I shot multiple pictures like this on that same day and I took all of this time to perfect it and get it just right and then I wanna copy these settings and bring it to another photograph. So if I right click on this photograph, I can do copy adjustments and then if I click done here and go to a different picture, let's say I wanna do the same thing to uh, the sunset here if I go to edit again in the top right, I can right click and do paste adjustments. And it's gonna take all of those settings and all of those slider changes that I did and apply that to this particular photo. And notice to me, eh, not a huge fan, I don't like it. So I can always click back on revert to original in the top left and I can start back square one. So I'm gonna click done. I'm gonna go back to our black and white photo Go back to edit, and as you can see, it's all the way I want it. The next tools we have that's, that we'll look at, we got color, black and white. Let's look at the retouch tool. Retouch tool is actually really, really good. You don't need, uh, you know, if you're wanting to remove some blemishes, simple things out of a photograph. Now, we're not talking about, you know, slapping little brother's head on top of sister's head. We're not manipulating a photograph, we're retouching a photograph. We're taking little blemishes and little things that we don't like out of it so that we can make quote unquote the perfect picture. So let's go back to this picture here. Uh, this taking some family photographs uh, back in the studio and notice mom was so worried because the, the little girl had you know scars or she got scratched underneath her eye and she's like, I didn't even want to take pictures today because she had these horrible scratches and scabs and I'm like, no big deal, we can easily solve that, we can retouch that, and this is a prime example of how to do that. So I actually have two photographs of her, and notice if I zoom in, she's got these little tiny scars here. So this is the prime tool to use for, for that. So I'm gonna go on edit in the top right, we're gonna come down to our retouch tool, and our retouch tool is just a, uh, we have our scale slider for our brush, and you always wanna make your brush just slightly larger than what you're trying to get rid of. So if I'm trying, if I'm at this large all the way at 200, well now this isn't gonna work. If I click on this eye, notice what happens. It's completely noticeable. It's, it's just way too big. Don't wanna do that. So we can do edit undo, or I can undo this slider, or I can revert back to original. Multiple ways of how you can undo that edit. I'm gonna go back up to edit and choose undo so that it just does my last action. Now I'm gonna bring this slider down and there's another keyboard shortcut. It's the bracket button on the keyboard. If I press left bracket, it's going to make the brush smaller. Right bracket, I can make it larger. So I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna make it just as big as this. And I'm just gonna actually pretend like I'm just painting. And there we go, just like that, poof gone magic so i can go through here and eliminate make the brush just slightly larger or i can just click on a spot and i can slowly get rid i could even zoom more these little things under the nose we can get rid of that 
Might have to make the brush a little bit larger as we go through here. And this is where, you know, as, uh, as the software gets better, you know, the retouching tool learns and does better algorithms and analyzes the photo better, they've made some improvements behind the scenes with the retouching tool so it gets smarter and smarter. We've now pretty much gotten rid of all of those scars. She doesn't have to worry about that. And we can go in and, and do even a little bit more if we wanted to. So that's the retouching tool. Awesome, powerful tool, you can really do a lot. If I wanted to go back and do this one, again, edit, we'll open up the retouch grab the brush here. I'm going to zoom into the spots. We can drag the slider or use the keyboard shortcut. And I can go on here and I can get rid of these blemishes pretty easily, literally in a matter of seconds. There we go. Another shortcut is when you're zoomed in like this, if I press the space bar on the keyboard, notice how it turns into the hand. It allows so that I can press the space bar and click and drag and I can still stay zoomed in without having to constantly zoom in, zoom out and go back and forth. You also can scroll up or down on your trackpad and all around in a 360 degree way or depending on your mouse, you can do that also. All right, so that was the retouch tool. Now let's go ahead and look at another picture. Let's take this uh, rock on the shore here. We're gonna go to edit and let's take a peek at white balance. So white balance is pretty much giving you the, the ability to again, change kind of the color temperature, the tint based off of the photograph of you know the grays or the whites in a picture. So here we have a natural gray, we have skin tone, temperature. We'll use temperature as an example. So if I drag the temperature all the way to the right, notice it's getting this warm feeling. Maybe I'm at the beach on the shore and it's really, really hot outside or late afternoon, we have that nice golden hour sunset. Or if I drag it all the way to the left, it's now going to be more blue, almost like it's cold outside. So you kind of have to find your happy medium and go with, again, whatever you think looks good. There's also this little eyedropper that, notice down at the bottom it says, choose a natural gray in the photo to set its white balance. So it's saying, hey, click on something that you deem is gray in your picture and I'll do the rest. So if I click on the rock, it's going to do a white balance based off of where I clicked. Now notice if I do that same thing on the blue sky, now notice very subtle change, but it changes the whole overall feel of that photograph. You also have your tint options, which are gonna throw a little bit of color into that, make it more purplish. And so you can play around with the overall warm uh, balance, white balance of that picture. But again, you have skin tone, natural gray. Let's go ahead and see what this, the skin tone looks like. Let's bring it, uh, come back to this picture here. We're gonna go to edit and we're gonna choose skin tone. And it's gonna say click or choose a skin tone in the photo to set its white balance. So we're gonna click right on her cheek and I need to drag the slider first. And notice if I drag it to the left, she almost looks kind of pale drag it to the right. She definitely is a little bit more warm. So very subtle change. Now notice it also is affecting some of her hair too because it's slightly blonde and it has that similar brownish golden color to it also. So again, just kind of play around with it. Based off of the photo, you're gonna have different, different results. So let's go ahead and choose done here and let's move on to levels and curves. I'm gonna open up this picture. We were down in uh, Wisconsin Dells and we rode the ducks. Have you guys ever ridden the ducks? Probably not. If you haven't heard of the Ducks, the Wisconsin Dells, just kind of a little tourist town. It's pretty much these old army vehicles that uh, go into the water and then they go on land also and they call them army ducks. I don't know, it was fun. It took us here, it's pretty cool. But here we're gonna go ahead and play around with the levels and the curves because the levels and the curves pretty much just give you more isolated edits based off of the highlights of the photos, the blacks of the photos, the shadows, the midtones, so on and so forth. So the curves here, I'm gonna drag in the bottom left, this represents black, in the bottom right, it represents white. Now remember that help tutorial or the, the guide I was telling you about? Go to help and we're gonna type in curves here and let's actually see what the definition for this is. 
Because notice, the curve adjustment shows a histogram with a diagonal line going from the black point, bottom left, to the upper white point, right point, top right. And to adjust the brightness or contrast in a photo, you can add points along the line and change them on the photo. Drag a point up to increase the brightness, drag a point down to decrease, drag it to the left to increase the contrast, drag to the right to decrease contrast. So if I click on this line here, if I drag it up, notice overall it's getting brighter. If I drag it down, notice it's going to get what? It's going to get darker. Now, if I drag this, put it back in the middle, again, you can put multiple points on here. So I can click here. And as I go to the right, remember, I'm only adjusting the top part. So notice as I do this, it's really only affecting the sky because I'm not working with these other points on the histogram down here. I'm only working in that top upper region, top right, where it's designated for the white points, for the bright points. So I can drag that and I'm only affecting that. If I come back down here, notice it's only going to adjust the dark, the water, the trees, all of the dark areas of that. So that's kind of how the curves work. And you can do it with different, uh, that's doing on the RGB spectrum, the red, green, and blue, but you can go and do each individual color as well. And this is where you're gonna get lots of oddball colors if you don't know your color science, which I don't, which is why it looks like this. So I'm gonna reset this curve and I can also use the auto too. If I click auto, see what it does. Maybe it looks really, really good. And I'm on green actually, so let's go back to RGB. We'll click auto and see if any changes that it does. Now levels is very similar to curves. It gives you the ability to adjust every single red, green, and blue together or individually, but it also gives you this luminance, which is just the overall brightness of the photograph. So here I'm only dealing with, uh, on, on the bottom here, I have these five different sliders. And as I drag them left or right, I'm just individually controlling the, the mid-tones, the shadows, the black points, and the highlights of the photograph. So you can get lots of varying results with this, and maybe I want the shadows to come up a little bit, mid-tones to come back down, and I can play around with that. So I can also use auto, that's gonna reset it and go back to what it thinks is best so curves and levels uh, play around with it. It's definitely more advanced tool, but you can really make some creative uh, feel and, uh, and styles to your, your pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and choose done here. Uh, we're gonna go to a couple more. Uh, let's do selective color because selective color, you got lots of choices with that. So I'm gonna choose edit. And selective color is pretty much where you're isolating one color and then you're just manipulating that one color. So here we have a nice contrasting photo. It's pretty much all green except, except for that red flower in the center. But people like to you know, make everything black and white but then have some color pop out. So if we wanted to do that, I could go and click on red here under the selective color. And now, uh, actually I'm gonna do green because I want to affect the green and I'm just gonna drag saturation all the way down. That's essentially saying, hey, everything that's green, turn it black and white, I want no color and leave everything else. So notice that's exactly what it did. I now am left with pretty much a black and white picture with this red flower popping out. Now, if I wanted to do the reverse, red, drag it down. I can go back to green and reverse it and now I reverse that. So you can kind of play around and get various results. I can reset this and you can also use the eyedropper also. So if you had a lot of colors in a photograph and it wasn't as prominent as the red, yellow, green here, you can specifically choose a color based off of the eyedropper there and also change maybe the hue. Maybe I don't want this to be a red, I want it to be a purple magenta uh, flower. So now I can actually turn it red to a different color hue, which is kind of fun too. And I can change the luminance, which is the brightness. And I can also adjust the range. The range meaning that, you know, red is just not red. Red is a lot of different variations of red. So let's pretend that red, uh, there's actually 50 different 
shades of red. Well, when you're adjusting the range, you're saying, okay, do I want to take only the adjustments or the range from one to 10 of that red? Or do I want to take the adjustments from one to 50 with that range of red? And so you're going to get various shades within that range based off of what you're chosen in this range slider here. So color selective, really kind of cool. Go ahead and play around with that. It's fun, artistic feel to it. Uh, the next couple here are noise reduction, sharpen, and vignette. Uh, we'll start at the bottom. Vignette is just kind of adding that little shadow around the perimeter of the photo, kind of drives your focus to the center. You can soften it, you can change the radius of how big or large it is. If you go the opposite way, it's gonna produce white instead of the, the dark feel. So again, uh, less is more, just a subtle hint of it kind of helps a little bit. Create a softness and bring that uh, focus to the center of the picture. Again, I can press M on the keyboard, release it, so you can see this is the before, this is the after. Uh, sharpen is just going to sharpen the pixels. And as we zoom in here, if you sharpen too much, you'll start to really notice it. Notice here, I sharpened and the, the picture actually becomes a little grainy because I'm sharpening every individual photo. So if you over sharpen, it sometimes looks really abnormal and it doesn't look too good. And that's where you go to the noise reduction. Noise reduction is when you have a photograph that is very grainy and it's usually caused by low light conditions, the noise reduction allows you to kind of smooth out those pixels. So let's go to uh, another picture here, uh, the sunset. If we zoom in here to the sun, let's actually do edit. Let's increase the sharpen so we can see kind of how this looks. And notice in the waves, the water along the arm here, it's kind of jagged a little bit. Let's see what happens when we increase the noise reduction all the way up. And again, this is one of those where we can press option on the keyboard and even further increase it. And notice what it does is it literally just like melts all of the pixels together. And if we toggle this on and off, you can really see the before. So that's the after, this is the before. So if we zoom back out, it almost looks like a watercolor painting. Notice when you're zoomed back out, you really don't, it doesn't look as bad. So here is with the noise reduction on, here's with it off. So very, very subtle change. You can see kind of the definition in the water in the bottom left, kind of see it in the sun. So again, play around with it. It's not gonna be a one size fit for every single photo that you have. But that's pretty much an overview of all of the tools within photos you do have a lot at your fingertips it's definitely not photoshop but it is a great start to it and there are other options in the top right where you can actually add third-party apps so that you can further increase the editing and actually have like features of photoshop where you can use a marquee selection and edit a particular photo but that's that's for another time this is just kind of focusing on what's here right now and and that's pretty much it. So I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. Uh, if you have any questions, throw in comments down below and uh, hit that subscribe button, tap that little bell, and we'll see you next time.